Welcome to the third part of the PowerPoint Project 1 assignment. This is part 3, or the third video of the series in getting this project done. Again, if you haven't done parts 1 and 2, you need to take care of that because you're in the wrong portion of the assignment, unless, of course, you've done this in the book. Again, I'll continue with the PowerPoint presentation where I left off last. And the last place I did leave off was roughly on page 26 in your textbook. The slides have basically been created with the text contained in them and the different kinds of slides that you can choose under the new slide option. And we'll now continue by actually putting in some clip art. Clip art basically being just pictures, for the most part, clip art specifically deals with pictures that are not necessarily camera kinds of photographs, although a lot of the definitions are now blending and you can have cartoony looking art, you can have photographs from a digital or standard camera, you can have video clips, a lot of things like that. And we're actually going to use some clip art that's from a clip organizer that is in the Office software. Now you may need to download these clip arts from your instructor or from the textbook and I went through a way of doing that in a past video so you may want to check with your instructor in case you're hung up on not being able to find the slides because you're or rather the the pictures the clip art because yours may be in a different location from where mine are on the video starting on page 27 if you want to insert a clip art item into the slide you pick the correct slide and on page 27 we're going back to this very first slide slide number one that says it is easy being green you click the insert button up at the top or the insert tab rather on the ribbon and you'll choose you can choose either the word picture or clip art in this particular case we'll choose the word clip art and what will happen a pane like a small window will appear over to the right of the screen that says clip art and you have a lot of options here where you can choose all kinds of media from standard pictures to videos to audios it's just very generic they just call this clip art just from previous versions of PowerPoint they never Will really change the name. So clipboard includes a lot of these items. You'll then click inside the search box, and we're actually going to just just for the process of knowing how to find stuff if you don't know specifically where the pictures are. We'll type in the phrase "green globe." Again, that's from instruction red circle number one on page forty-seven in your book. Click the and and before you click go, go down to this little check box at the bottom that says "include Office Com." Dot com content. I didn't mean bottom of the screen, but just right below the search areas. Once you've clicked that little chat box, you can click the Go button. I'm now on page 28 in your book, and you'll get a series of Green Globe items. And you want to choose the one similar to the one in your book. It looks like a little flower with a globe in the center. You may have to use a little drop-down arrow to scroll through these, or scroll bar to see where these are. And there it is right there. You can either double-click on it, or you can click this and choose the insert button. Sometimes it will automatically insert. And by default, it will put the clip art in the center of the screen. We're not worried about positioning it right now, but if you need to know early about positioning, for those of you who are new to it, you can go in the center of the clip art where it's four arrows on the mouse pointer and you can move stuff around when you have four arrows. When you have two arrows, similar to what we did in Word with the dog pictures, you can hold the mouse button and drag and you can resize and reshape stuff as you need to. I'll go ahead and just hit the undo button to get it back into its original position. Okay, we'll now go to the next slide, slide two. And if you want to choose the next slide button, you can certainly do that by just clicking the arrow to go to the next slide. Slide number two is the one that has the small changes to cut, to cut energy. And we'll now go to this search box again. If by chance you had closed this, you would go to insert clip art and your clip art pane would come back again. This time let's type in the word faucets for the search. And I'm on the bottom of page 28 and click the go button. And we'll see the different kinds of faucets. Now I had a hard time the first time I did this assignment finding the correct faucet. But if you match from the book, you'll probably have to scroll for the most part close to the bottom of the list and I'm thinking it's on the left hand side. I'll point this out, but just keep scrolling through. There are plenty of faucets listed here. I wouldn't have a really major fit if you picked a different faucet from the one in the book, but I'll go ahead and match it for the people who might be more comfortable this way. And there it is right there. It's toward the bottom of the list. This one happens to be on the right hand side. The one in the book 
is on the left hand side of the screen. Mine is on the right hand side. If you click that to insert it, it again puts it in the center. Now, to get the next clip art into the slide, you can click search. I'm on the bottom of page 29 now. And now we're going to click in there and we're going to search for the word dishwasher. And of course, spelling is important. Click the go button. And we get a series of dishwashers. It happens in this one that we're choosing the very first one in the list. Now, a little warning before I click it. Because there's no placeholder actually here to house the slide, or the clip art rather, I keep saying slide, it will default to the center. So the dishwasher for right now is going to go on top of the faucet. Don't let that bother you. They're perfectly safe right there for now. We'll go to page 30, and we're just inserting all the clip art at once right now. So go to slide number 3, which had nothing on it but the title initially. In fact, I think we're skipping that. I apologize. Let's go to slide number 4, the last one at this point. And now we have some placeholders where it says click to add text. Notice there, there are six little icons at the bottom where I can insert a table, a chart from an Excel graph, smart art, a movie or media clip, clip art, and picture from file. If you'll go down here to this slide and go to the section that says furnace 68 degrees, if you'll click the little clip art icon, and that's the little, it's the middle one, second row, where I'm pointing right now, just click that and you can click it again, it just did a little switch. The, what, what the little clip art does, it turns the, the, the window pane on and off, so to speak. That's the reason it disappeared. When you click it so that the clip art is there, you can then go in, choose in step two on page 30, the search, and we're going to look for the word furnace. Click go. Now the difference here, once we find the furnace, which happens to be down here at the bottom, third row on the right, when you click it this time, instead of going into the center of the slide because there is a placeholder here, it will actually go in that area where those six little pictures are because there's a placeholder already set up for it. Do the same thing on page 31 to search for the water heater. The clip art's already there, so if you, if you want to just click on it, if the, if the pane disappears, just click it again. doesn't matter. You can just go straight over here to where it says furnace and type in the search phrase water heater. Click go. And it's a pretty routine process now. The water heater in this case happens to be nice and different. In your book from what I have on my screen, that one's on the left, this one's on the right. But you see the picture, click on it, and it goes in that placeholder. You can not only put clip art, cartoony pictures in there, you can also do photographs that have been done as well. And I'm going back to slide three, which had just the title Energy Efficient Lighting, and we'll insert a photograph in there. Now again, there's no placeholder as there was in the previous slide right here, so it's going to go to the center of the screen by default. Same process to do this. Go over to the search box in clip art and type in the letters CFL. I have no idea what that means because I didn't check on it to see what it means, but I guess it is with the file extension. I think it's one of those fluorescent lights that saves energy, and I don't remember what CFL stands for. Someone can tell me sometime. Click go, and we're getting photographs rather than cartoony pictures and we'll choose the one that's got that nice green background in my case it's the second row first item where in your book it's the third row and again it's going to go to the center of the screen it's a bigger image than the others were and that's why it came in large but it came in at the center now we can go in and resize these and reposition these as we need to so we'll go over to page 33 and look at the first slide so look at that clip art that's got the, the green globe in there and on page 31, if you look at the directions, you might want to go ahead and close the clip art window pane. Just click the X, not the one at the top of the screen with your document or your PowerPoint, but you want to click on the little X that's got the clip art window pane, and that will go away. I'm going to go ahead, even though the book doesn't say so, I'm going to go to the File tab and go ahead and save this again just to update. I should have done this in previous videos and didn't. And it's got the name Saving Energy and Desktop already there. It's going to ask me to replace it, which means it's going to update the changes. So go ahead and click Yes there. At least I have this saved. All right? Now, to resize the clip art, page 33, you just go in and get slide one by whatever means necessary. They say something about clicking the previous slide button two times. Just get to it any way you need to. If you, if you click on the clip art, you'll get the little handles or box that surrounds it. If you'll go to the 
lower left hand corner it's called a sizing handle your mouse will change to two arrowheads rather than four and what you do is just hold your mouse button down and drag it toward the center of the slide just position it you don't have to be super precise but just get it approximately where the green globe doesn't go on top of the words you want to move around and now now your book will have it on top of the words but i'm just saving you some time if you want to physically move it you can get in the middle of the picture where you've got four arrows rather than two and if you hold the mouse down you can actually move it around i'm not really being picky about that if you want to go to slide number four which is on page 35 in your book to change the size of those just click on the particular picture go to either corner now they're going lower left hand corner you can go either way you want to and just drag it outwardly away from the center of the picture and it will resize the picture for you and just position as you need to do the same thing with the furnace and I'm not being super picky about that as long as it's neat again if you grab the clip art in the middle you can move the entire clip art instead of resizing it same thing with the photograph go to that particular slide and I'm on page 35 at the bottom and again, they're, they're, they're using the lower left corner quite a bit. Just click on it so you get the little handles. And if you just move toward the center, you'll make it a little bit smaller. Again, you can go to the middle if you want to drag it. Don't worry about being super precise with the directions here. As long as you get a nice position for the photograph, I'm not really concerned too much about that other part. They've done these in a weird order to me, but page 37, we're going to go in and we're going to take the dishwasher and the faucet that's hidden under it. If I click on the dishwasher right now and just hold the mouse down with the with the mouse pointer in the center, I can move it down and out of the way and then I'll see the faucet. I can click on that, the little handles or white boxes and circles will be around that and I can move those down to an area also. And you can resize these just as long as aesthetically it looks nice. I'm not going to look at measurements and be super picky about it, just as long as it's neat. And again, they're doing the same thing in instruction number four on page 37. Basically, I have combined in the video the moving of the clip art and the resizing of it sort of at the same time. On page 38, we're going to actually duplicate slide and I'll go ahead and do that now before I close this video these slides have the end slide and beginning slide you may want to have slides that have almost the same information to make some slight changes so what I'm going to do slide one is selected both here and in the side window and if you move over let me make sure I got this right I'm looking at the book to make sure that everything's okay here with the slide number one selected, if you will go to the new slide arrow, not new slide, but the arrow, down at the bottom below all these slide options, there's something that says duplicate selected slides. It's kind of like a copy and paste situation. And once you click that, it will give you an additional slide like the other one. Now, I put it, in my case, immediately below it. Slide two is now a duplicate of slide one. And you can rearrange these slides very easily. Page 39 and page 40 show you how to do that. You can either take the slide in this little window right here and drag it all the way down to the bottom. I think that's more difficult personally. An easier way, I think, would be to go over here at the bottom corner of the screen where you have four little squares and it says slide sorter. That will show you all five slides at once. And to me, it's easier to take that duplicated slide and just drag it this way because you have a better control over it. And where you see this vertical black line as a marker, it will give you the position where that slide lands. And now you have them in, it's a little easier to me to position them that way. That's not what the book said, but it's easier in my opinion. And you can just double click one of the slides to get back to your original normal view. I'm stopping right here at this part of the video and if you have any questions check with your instructor replay this as necessary if you need to as well